not going to, I'm just going to keep give one to the coach because um, I want to finish my work here. Yeah. Uh, who did you say your grade would be?
senior. That's how their seniors end up looking. Yeah. I guess they all must have done something. Hey, gents, I came back from my father. There's two, I think there's two of them underneath one of them. I don't know. No, is that yours? You want some? Here, I'll give him a good one. I'm not high. There you go. All right. <laughs> okay, we have a full house, obviously. So, um, uh, again, <clears throat> wait for the microphones to come to you for questions. Uh, please state your name, your affiliation, and in the case of the players, please direct the question to a specific player so that uh, Tony here can uh, keep her sanity. So uh, without further ado, uh, congratulations, Rhode Island. Uh, Coach Hurley, uh, give us uh, your analysis of what happened out there today. Yeah, obviously, uh, you know, th uh, thrilled to come out of here you know, with the win against you know, program of the, of the caliber of, you know, Creighton, you know, with the, you know, one of the very best coaches in college and, and you know, obviously high level, uh, high level players, you know, uh, our goal going in, you know, obviously was to uh, try to take away the three point line as much as we could force them into tough twos and just try to make them uncomfortable on offense. Uh, that was our plan, you know, and then, and then the, you know, the goal, uh, you know, another goal we had defensively was just to try to keep, you know, that, that, Dynamic combo of of Foster and uh, and Thomas to 25 points or less, and um, you know that was obviously a you know big factor in the game. You know holding those guys, uh, you know to uh, to the numbers they had. But uh, you know th this uh, you know, that 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 you know that that win was about these guys to my right. Uh, you know these guys were awesome, and uh, we really showed our depth and really just wore on them with our defensive intensity and and playmaking. Question in the corner, Janie. Hi guys, uh, congrats, Janie McCauley from AP. Jared, I watched you kind of skip skip off uh, there a little bit, and you guys posed for a photo. And but it seemed like you did all of the little things down the stretch. I mean, you got stops, you made them miss second chances, free, th and and do you guys always make free throws like this and and chase loose balls the way you did and and do all that? Uh, yeah, I just think we were just locked in today uh, defensively, and uh, we were just confident going to the line and uh, being able to knock down our free throws. But just uh, sticking to our principles on defense and rebounding very well, uh, I'm just glad we came out with the win. Kobe Cotter, Nary Ansa Times. Uh, for Hassan, um, you were matched up with Patton, who was probably a future lottery pick. Uh, he fouled out, didn't shoot the ball well, didn't score many points. You had a great game. What can you say about dominating a guy like that who's probably going to be playing in the NBA next year? Feels great, you know. He's a he's a great player, and um, my my mindset coming in here was uh, just be real physical with him. I know he wasn't that 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 uh, strong of a guy, but he he's real tall. So um, like I said, I just had to push him off the block, uh, box him out real hard, and that's what I did. He got in foul trouble and he fouled out. Howie Casoy, New York Post. Dan, um, I'm just curious. I mean. Given how long it had been since the school had been here, your first appearance, the players' first appearance, what were the emotions like coming into the game? And then also, given the trouble with free throw shooting this year, how shocked are you to see these numbers? Yeah, you know, I think it was uh, you know just justice there. You know that you know uh, I've taken a lot of flack for our free throw shooting, and on the overnight, you know I guess as a coach, I finally figured out how to teach it. Um, it's tongue in cheek, obviously. Uh, yeah, listen, this is great for these guys. I mean, these guys committed to this program on, on a, you know, on a plan, on a kind of like a dream of, you know, what we could accomplish as they got older. You know, we feel like we could have been maybe in this position last year if, you know, the guy to my right didn't get hurt and then the guy a couple more spots over to my right didn't get hurt. But 
this is so amazing for the players, for the school, you know, for our fans who've suffered for many years, and for the state, you know, it's such a great state, uh, you know, with great people, a beautiful place uh, to live, um, you know, so we're just so happy to bring type of, like, shine to, uh, to Rhode Island right now, and obviously, th these guys are high-level players to my right, and now they get the chance to perform on the national stage and show people how good they are. Will Gagan from the Independent. EC, it looked like the, the team really picked up where you left off after the A-10 tournament. How did it feel to you guys? Um, we did what we had to do. You know, uh, coaches uh, assigned us a great uh, game plan going into the game. Um, we just wanted to uh, uh, slow them down to, to the amount of threes they was they was making, and we wanted to get the ball and push it. And, um, you know, when we making shots beyond the arc, that just makes us even better because, you know, we're, uh, we're playing great defense and feeding off that. So, um it just coming down to making more winning plays. Uh, Bill Koch with the Providence Journal. Karan, uh, you made a three about five minutes ago, looked into the crowd, you know, gave him a little sign. You just looked very confident there. How has this team been able to carry that over the last nine games, just playing so confidently, whether it's a conference tournament or an NCAA game? Well, you know, I have a lot of good plays on my team. You know, I didn't think I was going to have a good offensive night tonight. Um, I, think we just, I thought I was just going to have a good defensive night. Um, but once I got that shot going, you know, I just kept, you know, telling myself, you know, the next one's going to be in, the next one's going, I'm going to make the next one. So I just try and do whatever, the, I, whatever it takes to help my team, you know, um, and I guess it worked. Matt. Uh, Tim Bonda from the Washington Post for, for Dan. Um, I, I, saw your, I saw your brothers in the crowd. I'm not sure if your dad was here, but it feels like this team is kind of built in the, the image you grew up with, a kind of physical, tough, Defensive-minded group is that is that a fair assessment? Yeah, I think it's. Yeah, I think we're built in the image of you know my family. You know, uh, obviously, we, you know we're all very intense. We're very passionate about about basketball. Uh, you know, very passionate about you know helping young people develop. And I think we also res uh, you know this team reflects you know a little bit of the city I grew up in, Jersey City. You know, just uh, you know a hard-nosed you know group of guys that play as hard as any team in the country. You know, and, and these guys are high-level players too. So they, you know, when you add high-level players and then they play with grit, real true grit, you have a chance to have something really, really great. Jeff, uh, 23 points in your, your first NCAA tournament game. Did you feel any jitters or was it just you were ready to go tonight? Um, yeah, I felt a couple jitters, you know, the first couple minutes of the game. But um, once I was able to get my confidence up and uh, – just get a rhythm going, you know, everything else just settled in. And uh, my teammates just, kept, just told me, uh, keep playing the same, same way you've been playing the, uh, the rest of the year. And then after that, I was just good to go. Coach Bill Horenda, News Radio KFBK. Quick question for you. Initial thoughts on uh, Oregon next. Yeah, you know what? Um, to be honest with you, you know, we, we have a couple coaches on staff here, you know, that, that were at the earlier game. Um, you know, we, we were so locked in on Creighton. You know, we we, uh, you know, we didn't get ahead of ourselves. We, we knew how, how great a team they are. And, uh, you know, we wanted to you know, show them the respect they de deserve with our preparation. You know, obviously, uh, you know, we're going to hustle now. And, you know, I'm going to lean on, lean on Brother Bob, you know, for a little Pac-12, uh, you know, a little Pac-12 intel. They played them very well uh, at Oregon and played them really well in the first half, in particular in the Pac-12 tournament. So, you know, Bob's here. And, uh, you know, now it becomes, you know, it was kind of a, you know, a, a vacation type of trip for him. And now it becomes a working trip for Bob as he now, I don't know if he's, I don't know if he's even allowed to unofficially join our staff. We've got to check with compliance. Hassan, have you, have you thought about what this moment means for, for Rhode Island, for this program? And, and you guys leaving your mark on, on this, uh, you know, program going into the future, and, and also how special was it to see everybody do the little things and knock down all the free throws when it mattered? Uh, honestly, it feels like I'm dreaming. Um, this is what what I've been act, what I've asked for when I first got here, and uh, it took took three four years, but uh, to finally just be here, the experience is amazing, and um, the way we're playing is outstanding. I couldn't be more proud of my team and my coaches for getting us prepared, and. Um, like I said, my team is real confident when they no matter who we face and um you know, I'm having fun, these guys are having fun and I wouldn't want to do this with any any other group of guys or coaches and I'm real real excited for this for Rhode Island.
Uh, ben Schneider, AP Radio Coach. You guys have defended the three ball all, uh, well all season. Second in the country, uh, three-point percentage. Today you held Creighton to just 30%. How satisfying is it to kind of win on something that you guys have been doing all year, defending the three? Uh, how do you get guys to buy into that? I know it's not a real, in this day and age, with the three ball being so important, and just talk about how you guys held Creighton to 30% on threes. Uh, how do you get the guys to buy into that, and how satisfying is it to, to kind of hold your own on that? Listen, we, we do closeout drills at nauseum. These guys don't like it. They don't like starting practice with, you know, two-line closeout, three on four, rotate, communicate. They don't love those drills. They probably ask themselves why they're doing it. You know, 99 straight practices during the course of the season. Uh, you know, but we work a lot on closeout technique. We, we work a lot on, on scrambling, you know, rotating. Uh, and, and we knew that, you know, we had to get great contests, uh, you know, today. And, and, and I think what's unique about our defense is, you know, that, that we do a really good job of contesting the three-point line but also to contesting the front of the rim, you know, just because of the way that our guys compete and rotate and just keep scrambling and they just never stop playing. For Karan, uh, I think you played in a, a game at Memphis in the NCAA tournament for maybe two minutes. How does it feel to get back here and play a lot more <laughs> minutes and have them be meaningful minutes? Uh, I mean, them two minutes were, you know, I enjoyed them. You know, I only had two points as well. So, you know, just getting here, you know, is exciting. You know, I just want to keep, keep going, you know. Especially for these guys, you know, they put to put together something special, you know, and I join and I just want to contribute to the team. Uh, Bill Koch for the Providence Journal. Jared, uh, you played well against Matt Mobley in the conference tournament, St. Bonaventure, and obviously uh, Foster struggled today. Is there anything that you try to do in common when you're playing against a high scoring guard? Uh, just pressure and contain. Uh, to know my spots, when to be aggressive, and um, just watching film. Before the, before the game and just having a, a good idea of what he likes to do and his tendencies. Um, so I just able to cut some of his moves and uh, just stay in front of him. Stone Freeman, URI Student Radio. Uh, Coach, it's been 18 years, obviously, and a uh, long time coming, 3,000 miles away. What does it feel like to see a crowd like that from Rhode Island represented here? Yeah, I, I thought it was amazing. You know, obviously, you know, across the bench, it was pretty cool that they were, they were there and we could see them. And, you know, and, and they were loud, and, you know, it was like, you know, the, the, the emotion from them was, it almost felt like, you know, 18 years worth of excitement, you know, and, and they, uh, you know, they, they really inspired the guys, and, you know, th this team has developed such a great connection over the last month or so w with our fans, you know, because of the, the way we won home games down the stretch, you know, kind of running through that 8-10 tournament, you know, and, and then getting out here, it's like, you know, now, now there's like this program with the run we've been on has now kind of made that connection with our fans, and uh, it's exciting. Any other questions? One more. Uh, EC, it looked like you went off for treatment uh, either early or, or sort of like the 13-minute mark of the second half. You went to the locker room. What was going on there? Uh, I was just a little stiff. Uh, my right knee just got a little stiff on me, so I just wanted to go back. And, uh, the trainer had uh, stretched me out a little bit, and I readjusted my brace and just got back out there. So it's not too serious. Okay, gentlemen, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.
For the Creighton Blue Jays, our student athlete guests are Isaiah Zierden, Cole Huff, and Zach Hansen, along with uh, head coach Greg McDermott. Coach, would, uh, would you start us off uh, your impressions, analysis of the game today? Well, I'd like to congratulate uh, Rhode Island. Uh, coach Hurley's done a terrific job uh, throughout the season and obviously has them playing their best basketball at the right time. Uh, you know, for us, we really needed to, you know, play defensively in the second half like we did the first half and play offensively in the first half like we did the second half. Uh, you know, our offensive numbers were really poor uh, the first half, but defensively we did enough uh, to keep us in the game. And the second half we had a hard time guarding them uh, without fouling. Uh, and even though we moved the ball and, you know, put 46 points on the board, uh, it was a little bit too little too late. But extremely proud of our team, especially proud of these three guys that are up here with me. Uh, you know, when they, Zach and Isaiah have been part of a team that was the number three seed in the NCAA tournament. And they've also been part of a team that finished ninth in the Big East, went four and 14. Uh, that was Cole's redshirt year. Uh, so the three of them have really, uh, are hugely responsible for helping get our program back to where it is today. And uh, I'm forever grateful for them. And uh, not just for what they've done for us on the court, um, but the way they've conducted themselves off the floor. Uh, they've been first-class representatives uh, of Creighton, uh, of our basketball program, and certainly of their families. Uh, so, you know, they're going to be successful uh, in whatever they choose to do, and it's, it's, it's been 100% uh, you know, my pleasure to have the opportunity to coach them. Questions? I'd say I guess the, the natural <coughs> question is, what what did they do defensively to kind of knock you off kilter? I know they pressure really, really well and extend out, but um, just what was it about their playing that knocked you off in the first half? Um, you know, it wasn't anything that we weren't ready for. Um, just got a little sped up. Um, they try to try to body you, um, push you around, make you go where, where they want you to go and, and catch. Um, and they did a good job. They tried to speed us up, and it's exactly what they did. Uh, Alex Sindelar of SB Nation. Uh, Coach, uh, what went into the decision of starting Ronnie at, uh, well, not starting him, but playing uh, Ronnie Harrell uh, at point guard a lot today? Uh, a couple things. Uh, part of it is uh, he played really well against Villanova. Uh, when we put him in in the second half, I thought he gave us a great lift on both ends of the floor. Uh, he's continued to practice well since that time. And because of the length that they had across the guard court, uh, his ability to see over some of their, they, they were very aggressive on ball screens, uh, and he could see over it better than Davion and, and Z and Tyler. Uh, so we went with it, and when, when he went out there, he played well, uh, so we rolled with it. And, you know, it's been that case with this team all year. Uh, when, a, when a guy's number's called, we expect him to be ready. And, and fortunately for us, Ronnie was ready today because he impacted the game in a positive way. Yeah. John Niantel with the World Herald. I guess for all the players, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how you sum up this season. I know it hurts at this moment, but um, given the adversity and trying to reshape your team the way you did down the stretch, what 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 do you take away from the way you finished and and uh, you know what it mean what it meant the last few weeks to to still stick together and and uh, get wins despite you know not having your full squad. Um, I just think. Um, you know, top to bottom, from our coaching staff to all the guys on the team, I think, um, I think it really speaks to the character of everybody on this team. Because, um, you know, with all we've went through with injuries and um, you know just adversity and everything, um, it could have been easy for us to kind of divide as a program and um, you know at times even kind of give up a little bit. And that's never what we did. We always took together. We always kept our heads up, we always showed up and worked, and we always kept our goals in mind. We never let, you know, things that could have brought us down, we didn't let it happen. So I guess I'm really proud of 
all the guys on the team and just our program in general because I think it speaks to, you know, how good of people we have uh, in this program. Any other questions? Down here. Uh, Coach Bill Koch with the Providence Journal. Uh, how much did they maybe resemble a Big East team defensively in terms of their physicality on the perimeter and, and their uh, their depth among their guards? I would say very similar. Um, you know, a as you watch them over the course of the season, I watch some of their early games and obviously watch the run they've had the last two or three weeks. Uh, <clears throat> There's there's mo there's noticeable improvement in in what they're doing defensively and their attention to detail. I mean they're they're extremely physical, um, and today they were able to play that physical defense without fouling. They've had they've had times during the year where they fouled a lot, and we were the ones that fouled a lot today. Uh, but this is this is a very good basketball team. This is a you know that's a top 25 basketball team and a uh, a team that can on the right night can beat anybody in this tournament. Greg, I just what, what did you see that you guys maybe didn't do effectively offensively in the first half that once once you got settled in you you, you figured out and and started having a little better a little bit better possessions offensively? Well, we had some opportunities early with some shots that came as a result of you know Justin or Zach getting to the rim after a ball screen, and we sprayed it out and we missed some of those. We missed a few shots around the rim. Um, and you know when you're not making the shots, you don't really make them adjust. You know you're not going to adjust as a coach until something's really hurting you. And we weren't able to do enough in the first half to force any adjustments with how they were defending with their pressure. Um, and uh, you know they were they're, they're really good. They're really good. And, and obviously we didn't have our A game today. And to win today, we were going to need that. I'll ask you another one, Greg. Um, defensively, you mentioned just maybe fouling too much, but it seemed like they, they, you know, you, you assigned Kyrie to to guard EC, the best player, but but their point guard Doughton kind of got into the teeth of the defense and hurt you a little bit, maybe off ball screens. What did he do, and why did, why did he uh, find a way to to break you guys down the way he did? I, I thought he I thought he played with great pace. I thought you know while he didn't have any assist, uh, he also didn't turn it over and. Uh, you know, if you'd have told me EC and, and Terrell were going to be six of 20 between them, I would have said we're probably winning the game uh, until you tell me that Justin and Marcus went nine of 31. So that kind of trumps that. Uh, but, you know, the, their, their secondary scores, obviously Hassan is he's special in there because he, he doesn't require the ball all the time, but when they need a basket, you can go to him and he's going to make a pretty good decision with it. And he, he kind of got what he usually gets. Um, and we did a, a really good job on those other two. Uh, just, uh, you know, Doughton really hurt us. And then Iverson in the first half, his, those two three-point shots he hit were really critical, especially the one late in the half. So, um, you know, I, I thought uh, our defensive plan was good enough, uh, certainly was good enough the first half. Uh, we just couldn't score. And then once we got behind, obviously we fouled a bunch, and that's, you know, that's got a lot to do with the free throw differential. Any further questions? This is maybe an easy answer, Cole, but just how, how tough is it to swallow knowing that you guys, you didn't play your best, that, that there was more to show? Like Coach mentioned, you know, layups and shots that you had there, you, you just didn't finish. How do you sort of come to grips with, you know, the season ending in this fashion? Um, it's tough. Just like any other loss, you're, you're always going to look back at, you know, the few plays that you wish you could have had back, things that you could have done differently. Um, unfortunately, this time, there's nothing else to look forward to. There's no moving on to the next game and preparing for something else. So it's it definitely hurts, especially uh, being in the NCAA tournament. Us three never really – I mean, I've never been. I know these two have been, but Isaiah was hurt the first time. and. Zach had a minimal role, um, so this was somewhat of our first appearance in the NCAA tournament, and you know we we wanted to put out a better effort than what we did. Um, so it hurts, it sucks, um, but at the same time we we don't have anything to, to hang our heads about.
Okay, thank you, gentlemen.